Hi and good day everyone. Welcome to Halsey How to Channel. Today I would like to share with you, pump sizing and system characteristic calculations. To size a pump capacity, there are two parameters you need to know. That is the flow required and what is the corresponding pumping head. For industry application, the master plan establishes the demand flow for the development based on the land use and population's estimation. The mechanical engineer, which is you, will need to size the correct pump capacity to deliver the required flow to the development. But how to calculate and determine the pump head required with the given flow demand? I will not go into detail formula in this video. If you want to learn more about the formula used to determine the pump head, please watch my other video title system characteristic curve as per the link above. In this session, I will show you how to calculate the total head required using the Microsoft Excel sheet by combining all the formulas and plot the system curves. Then, from the calculated duty point, select a pump which can deliver the flow in head to the system. Follow this video till the end of it I will show you how this is done. Please don't forget to subscribe and like my channel. Let go straight away to the topic today. First, we need to find out all the input parameters required. What are these parameters? As a minimum, we need to have the following. Piping material, flow, number of pumps in duty, length of pipe, flow velocity, and water levels. Type and number of the fittings, specials and valves. There are other input parameters which are optional like type of pumping system, condition of pipe, VFD operation piping classes etc. These optional parameters will enhance the calculations but is not compulsorily required. It is always a good practice to draw a schematic diagram showing the pumping system. In this Excel sheet, once you have chosen the type of pumping system, either wet well or dry well, and the number of duty pumps, a schematic will be generated automatically. Let me toggle between wet well and dry well type of pump station and you can see how the schematic will change and represent these types of pumping station. This is the dry well type of pumping schematic. And this is the wet well pumping schematic. Next is the input. There are quite a number of input parameters required in the calculations. You will need to insert these values manually in the Excel sheet. As an example, let's assume the following. There is a development that requires pump a flow demand of 300 liter per second to serve a new city. The water supply to the city was through a pumping station which is located 500 meters away. The water is conveyed by a single ductile iron pipe to the reservoir at this development before it is supplied by gravity to the users. At the pump station, the length of suction pipe from sump to pump station is 25 meter while the pump suction and length is 10 meters. The pump discharge header is 15 meter long within the pump station. Only one pump is required to deliver the flow. There are various fittings and valve along the water supply network, and they are as shown in the table. The sump water level is ranging from 8 meter minimum water level to 15 meter maximum water level. At the receiving tank, the minimum water level is 25 meter and the maximum water level is 32 meters. All these input data will be shown in the schematic diagram for easy reference. With all these inputs, you can calculate the total duty head required by clicking the calculate button. The working out is shown in the next sheet. The calculation will first determine the pipe diameter with the maximum flow velocity. This calculation will give the minimum pipe diameter suitable to be used. Then. The Reynolds number is calculated to see the flow whether it is a turbulent or laminar flow. Next, the most important calculation is the friction factor using the Colebrook White equation. This required the pipe roughness, diameter and Reynolds number. This calculation is quite a complex one as it requires many iterations to determine the friction factor. With the friction factor, you can proceed to calculate the frictional losses using the Darcy Weisbach equation. The minor losses is then be calculated with the type and number of fittings and specials and valves. Please note that the coefficient of losses, K2, can be obtained from the developer guidelines or the local authority's design manual. Finally, the static head calculations. The static head calculation will determine the full ranges of static head for the system by using the minimum and maximum water levels at both sump and receiving water tank. With all these calculations, 
The total head of the pump can be found by summing up all the losses. You will get the total head here. The Excel sheet will plot the system characteristic curve automatically. Let's go the curves sheet and you can see the system curves already plotted with a data table on top of it. To select a pump that is suitable for this application, the duty point shall be used to find this pump. For a city water supply network, the normal type of pump use for the water supply industry would be either an suction pump or horizontal split case HSC type of pump. Here I've chosen a HSC pump from the pump manufacturer's website and the pump performance data is given as shown. You can extract the pump flow and head data in the performance curve given and insert these values in the pump input sheet to generate the pump curve. Let's go back to the curve sheet once the pump data is completed. Here they are. You will find that the system characteristic curve intersect with the pump performance curves. If the pump selection is correct. You will find that the intersection point is exactly the duty point calculated. You could label the curves and the duty point to present them in the report. This all about the pump sizing and system characteristic curve calculations. I hope we'll learn something from this session. Please don't forget to subscribe and like my channel. Thanks for watching.